more on the fluid side. So I'm going to be more on the solid uh, mechanics side today. Uh, so thanks to the organizers uh, for this workshop that is uh, very interesting. So yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, some of my work on the efficiency of solvers for uh, phase field fracture models, um, which is not really the, the main topic of my PhD, but is some work that I had to do, as we're going to see. So the actual objective of my PhD is to uh, predict the fracture behavior of 3D printed pre sorry 3D printed composites. Um, but since it's a very complex problem uh, with the, the structure of the composites and its anisotropic behavior, we decided to use uh, a very powerful method, which is the, called the phase field method. However, it has one main drawback, which is the computational cost. Um, and so, for example, if we look at a very simple benchmark, we have a square plate uh, that is made of two different materials. So the bottom one is made of a soft material and the top one is, is 10 times stiffer. And we're gonna fix the left part and we're gonna pull on the right-hand side. And this is the crack propagation that we get and it's the expected solution. There's no surprises there. But the issue is to get this computation with our original method, our original solver. It used to take us 50 hours to, to get this to a solution. And it's not because our code is not efficient or anything like that. This is in the range of time that you will find in the literature. literature. Um, but what I'm going to show today is by simply using a better solver, uh, we brought this down to four hours of computation. And so uh, it's going to allow us to go faster in the next steps of, a, of my PhD project. Uh, so let's dive into the subject. I don't want to go too much into the details. But it's interesting to have an idea of what kind of equations we're solving here. So uh, phase field models for fractures stem from uh, a reformulation of Griffith's theory. So it's a very old uh, theory in fracture mechanics. It's dating back from 1921. Uh, and the idea is that if you have a cracked body, uh, you can formulate its total potential energy as its elastic energy and the energy associated to the creation of a crack. And this energy, this crack energy, is simply uh, a material constant times the crack surface. And Griffith at the same time also stated that the, the configuration of the body, so its displacement and crack configuration that the body would adopt under loading, would be the one minimizing its total potential energy. And so we can formulate this nicely as a variational problem here. Uh, we also introduce a constraint so that the, the crack doesn't heal but it's, it's more of a detail here. And so this is a nice setting from the mathematical point of view, but numerically it's very difficult to implement because of this uh, surface integral that we have here. Uh, to track the surface with uh, classical numerical methods like finite element methods is very difficult. So what we do with the phase field method is we introduce an auxiliary field to approximate this surface. So instead of representing the crack uh, as a sharp discontinuity in our, in our body, we use uh, what we call the face field or the, the damage field to describe the crack. So if the damage is worth zero, it's a scalar field. So if it's worth zero, uh, well, it, there's no damage. And if it's worth one, it means that the, the material point is fully broken, so it's a crack. And we introduce this regularization uh, through an elliptic functional, and so our surface integral becomes a body integral or a volume integral. And so we're, this can be seen as a density function. So we're going to integrate the density of damage over the whole body. And, and it's going to give us an approximation of the surface. Um, and also, uh, there's this degradation function appearing. So if it's fully broken, it means that the, there's no stiffness. So there's no elastic energy. So we're using this degradation function to, to modulate this uh, elastic energy. And so our variational problem can be stated now in terms of the displacement and the damage field. And so this is very powerful numerically. A lot of work has been done on that. Uh, but now we want to find a very efficient solver to, to solve this problem. So before we jump into the solver, I'm just going to define a benchmark model. So this is the one that we're going to use to as the subject of the benchmarking. Uh, we're going to consider only quasi-static loading, so no effects of uh, no dynamic effects. 
uh, no direct dependence of time. We're going to use the 81 model, which is in the face field literature, a very basic model. And we're also going to introduce uh, strain decomp decomposition. Again, I won't go too much into the details, but basically it adds even more nonlinearity to the problem because we solve our energy, in, uh, we, we split our energy in two parts. And so applying the direct, uh, directional derivatives, we can write our Erdahl-Lagrange equations of our problem. So with our derivative towards U, we have what we call the kinematic subproblem. So it, go, it governs the, the equilibrium of the body. And with the derivative towards the damage, uh, we have our damage subproblem, which governs the evolution of the crack. And we're going to discretize our body using uh, bilinear Lagrange uh, elements, quad elements. So for the benchmarking, we're only going to uh, we're only going to uh, study 2D domains, but it could be easily extended to 3D domains. So now let's look into the, the solvers that are available. So the, the, the easy idea is always to go to a Newton's method. Uh, but the issue here is that our functional is non-convex. So you're going to have issues. It's going to work on some very simple uh, tests, but gen generally you won't have a solution, it won't converge. Um, and so what people have been doing since the beginning is to use decoupled schemes. So what they do is if we come back to our two equations here, they will fix the damage and solve for U and using their new solution for U, they will fix it and then solve for D alternatively until global convergence. And so this is very robust because with our two equations, if you fix one field and look at the other, uh, both equations are convex, but due to the decoupled nature, the overall order of convergence is very slow. And so uh, many authors have tried to accelerate it. So we see all kinds of uh, acceleration. So uh, we see over relaxation, we see also Anderson acceleration. Um, and a few authors have attempted to, to propose monolithic schemes. So where, where we would deal with both equations at the same time. So, for example, what I will refer, refer to as the quasi-monolithic scheme, it's basically you apply Newton's method and you, you, you partially linearize one of the sub-equations. So it's going to get rid of some of this non-convexity. And also people have tried to apply very trivial modified Newton methods and also uh, quasi-Newton method. This one is the BFGS method is actually quite efficient, but it works only in very specific formulation of the model. But I'm not going to insist on that. So basically, in a preliminary study, I implemented almost all of these solvers. Um, but in the end, we chose three. So as a reference to solver, uh, because we know it's slow, but it's robust, and it's the one that about 95% of the literature is using. So we chose the staggered solver. So as I was saying, uh, you fix U, you solve for the damage, and then you go to your second equation using your new damage, you solve for, for U and you repeat alternatively until global convergence. Uh, the second solver that we, we chose, uh, and it's, it's surprising because the, when the author presented this solver, uh, he got really good results, for, but for some reasons, unknown reasons, nobody in the literature except him is using it. Um, so we decided to, after talking with the, this author, we decided to try it. And the idea is very simple. So it comes from the, you, the observation that our, our functional is non-convex due to this mixed term here that we have in U and D. And so the idea is just that when you apply your Newton's method, uh, we're going to linearize the kinematic subproblem by replacing this D by a set constant that we're going to approximate using other methods. So it can be seen as a, a partial linearization. And another solver that we decided to, to study, which is a very well-known solver in the optimization uh, field. It's actually the, uh, the, the solver of IP up, if anybody is familiar with the software. It's a modified Newton method with inertia correction and a line search. But for some reasons, uh, it was never used in the phase field literature. And so we decided to try it. Um, so as I was saying, it's a classical modified Newton method. We, we add the, a diagonal matrix to, um, and we, we take it bigger until our modified Jacobian is uh, positive definite. 
And then we use a standard armijo line search to identify our step size. So if we look at, to, at the, the benchmarking, so this is a very uh, simple benchmark that is uh, very popular in the literature. Uh, it's again, the square plate, uh, we introduce a, a notch in the middle, we fix the bottom and we pull horizontally at the top. And this is the pad, the, the crack pad that we find. So it's just, a, it, it initiates from the end of the notch and it, can, uh, it uh, grows towards the lower right corner. And I'm presenting only one since the three solvers were giving the same solution. Uh, but if we look at the efficiency, there, there's some important differences. So uh, the, the left graph is just the, the force displacement reaction. So once again, the solution is identical for three solvers. But we see on the right that, uh, well, the modified Newton solver is actually quite more um, efficient. Uh, and actually, it requires, so this is the cumulative total iteration. So across the time step, we accumulate the, the number of iteration required to converge. And so we see that where we have this sudden propagation, so this drop in the, the force, uh, we have this really huge um, instability in the solution, which creates this jump in iteration. But in the end, our modified Newton solver was 10 times faster than the, the proposed, well, not the proposed, but the standard staggered uh, solver that is used in the literature. So if we look at a second uh, benchmark, uh, it's similar. So we have, in, instead of it, it's an L-shaped panel, uh, it's mixed mode propagation. So we fix the bottom and we pull here. And um, the, the solutions are identical for the staggered solver and modified Newton solver, but we have a, a weird solution for the quasi monolithic scheme, suggesting that maybe it's not so robust. And so maybe that's some explanations for why it's not that much popular in the literature. And if we look at the efficiency, again, we see that this quasi monolithic scheme is giving a different solution. Uh, but once again, our modified Newton scheme is uh, up to 12 times faster than the standard scheme used in the literature. And finally, which is kind of interesting. Um, so the, the first benchmark that I presented is this delay your benchmark. And it's interesting because it produces an instable solution because uh, the crack will propagate from in the soft material from the notch. But the stiffer material will stop its propagation and the crack will split like this. But the where and when it will reinitiate in the second material is it's an instability. So numerically, it's controlled by uh, your, the quality of your mesh or the tolerance with which you, you solve your, your, your model. So this is the solution that I was showing at the beginning with the modified Newton solver. And we see that with the staggered solver, we have a quite like the opposite uh, solution. But what is interesting in this case is that uh, the quasi monolithic scheme won't give you a solution. It's not uh, robust enough. And also with the staggered scheme. So here I was solving uh, displacement first, then damage. But if you split it, uh, if you flip it, flip it, and you solve damage, then displacement, you, you, it won't converge. So it's not robust if you, if you split the two, if you flip the two operations. But uh, it gives us a mint again on the robustness of the solver. And so in the end, our modified Newton algorithm that we found in the optimization literature uh, ended up to be way more robust and up to 12 times faster uh, in those benchmark. So uh, now that we have reduced this computational cost, the next step will be, well, to maybe reduce it even more by using mesh adaptation. And of course, well, the objective is to model fracture in 3D printed composites. So thank you. Very, very interesting. Thank you very much. Do we have questions?